He wanted me to come check his cow. So I went over to the place. When I first went through town, I knew it'd be there all day, so I had a big flat enchiladas there at the cafe. Did it in May, hot day. He had a horse in the pen there, so I got his horse. The first pasture he wanted to check was the old homestead pasture. He called it that because years ago a homesteader tried to homestead it, built a cabin, and uh, they dug a cistern out by the cabin to collect water. But by now the, the cabin was gone, but the old cistern was still there. But never, never had covered it up or covered it over. It was just a hole out there, about 20 foot deep, rocks in the bottom. And I was riding this horse across the pasture. Whoa. It was hot. The horse went about half asleep, and I was about half asleep. We stumbled off into that cistern. He did a nose dive into it, broke his neck. Oh, I jumped to the side and landed on my feet, but I broke my feet, but I broke both ankles. Oh, no. So, I thought you were going to tell a joke for a minute. I haven't finished the story yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to wait for the punch <laughs> line. <laughs> you got him, hook line, sink. You got him, Glenn. I was in this hole 20 foot deep. Dead horse, nobody knew where I was, hadn't told anybody where I was going that day. Neighbor's gone for two weeks. So. I knew I had to get out by myself. So I thought, well, I'll get my rope and I'll toss it up and snag something up there and try to pull myself out. Well, my feet were broken, I couldn't stand up, so I couldn't get enough momentum on that rope. Of course, it's only 20 foot, 25 foot rope, it wouldn't go. That plan didn't work. So I crawled up over to the wall of that cistern stayed there all the rest of the day and all night. Bed horse in there. And finally the next morning the sun came up and shone right down on that little horse and he was starting to float and burgle, you know. And still hadn't figured out how to get out of there. And this went on for about three or four days. By the, by the fifth day that horse was getting off the rank. Still hot. No cloud in the sky, just some sun beating on that little horse. I'd about given up getting out of there. And I saw some shadows up above. I looked up and there's buzzards circling around. They finally spotted this horse in that hole. They circled, came down in that cistern, and started eating on the horse. And I said, boy, they're going to clean his bones pretty quick, and they're going to be after my bones next. So I finally came up with another plan, my sort of slow thinker. Uh, got my rope again and made six little small area ropes. And I roped six of these buzzards by the hind feet. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> There we uh, go. <laughs> then I had three buzzards roped in this left hand and three in the right hand, and I spooked the buzzards, and they went to flapping their wings and flying out of there. So they carried me right with them. And I was so glad to get out of that hole and get fresh air, I forgot to let go of the ropes when we got up to the ground level. So the next thing I know, I'm flying up air about 200 feet with these buzzards. We made a big circle around the pasture, looked over in the distance, and there's town in the distance, so herded these buzzards towards town. We flew to town, made a circle over town, looked down there's the doctor's office, so let one buzzard go at a time, loaded right down to the doctor's office there. <laughs> he came out and patched me up. <laughs> well, that's a lot better story than what really happened. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> All in all, the ladder's not too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really